Well, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel of well-known personalities whose lines you already know. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers Coast to Coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. a young humorist who has his own television show and is currently in rehearsal with a new Broadway play, The Pink Elephant, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who tonight, I don't know if it's visible to you folks at home, but she's all spangled with little spangles. It's very <laughs> lovely. Arlene Spangle, or Arlene Francis. And on my left, a gentleman who we have missed very much while he's been vacationing in sunny California, and whom we welcome back with a 21-gun salute of affection, <laughs> Mr. Bennett Sir. Thank you, Arlene. Uh, I see I've been moved south of the border since I left, <laughs> and in the case of Arlene, it's certainly the prettiest border I ever saw. Oh, my, thank you. <laughs> on my left is the famous news commentator, and moderator of this show, and it's my first chance to say in public how good I think he is, Mr. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nice to have you back here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we're going to put our cameras on some people who come to visit us and brought with them some very interesting and, we hope, unexpected occupations to give the panel some trouble so they'll get some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but now to start things rolling, it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they've got to spot. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Mary... Mary Flory, is that right? <laughs> Take it easy, nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Flory, where are you from? Glenline, Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania. Right. Well, now, we haven't got anybody from Pennsylvania on the panel, so uh, perhaps you'd like to go down and see what some outlanders look like. Will you walk mm -hmm. down in front of the panel for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Mary, you come on over here now, please, and sit down next to me. And on the basis of that uh, chance to meet you briefly and that fine, clear, meticulous handwriting of yours, perhaps they have some ideas. Because at this time, we always give the panel one free and wild guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she models bridal gowns. Mr. Allen. I think she models flower pots. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she's an egg candler. Mr. Seth. I think she's going to be a bride herself any day. <laughs> well, that may be true, but that's not the answer we're looking for. We'll let our viewers at home have another look at Miss Mary Flory, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> but the panel's got to dig, and Miss Flory, the rules are simplicity itself. Every time you get a no answer from anybody over there on the panel, it costs the panel $5. We'll keep a record of it up here, 10 of these no's, and you have won the game. Miss Flory is salaried with that. Let's begin the general questioning with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Miss Flory? Yes. And you deal in services? Yes. Would both men and women be interested in your services? Yes. <laughs> you learn new things. Well... Uh, would you say that your services applied more to one sex than the other? Yes. Uh, is that the uh, female sex? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Uh, Pink Elephant. Mr. Allen, excuse me. Uh, wonder what sex is left. <laughs> That's the male sex, I take it. Yes. I see. Uh, is there a product of any kind connected with what you do? Yes. Is it a product that might be found in the home? Yes. 
Is it smaller than a bread box? <laughs> yes. It is. Is it smaller than a loaf of bread? Yes. On a, uh, in a two-story home, would it be found on the second floor? Yes. <laughs> would it be more apt to be found on the second floor than the first? I mean, no. No, I wouldn't think so. Two down and eight to go, Miss Benson. Is this something that uh, a man would ever, uh, that a woman might buy for a man? Yes. Uh, would it be in the category of gifts at uh, Christmas time or birthday time? Yes. Is it anything that a man might put on? No. No. Well, that's three down and seven to go, Mr. Seth. Miss Flory, is, uh, is this cons consumable? It is consumed yes. in the use, yes. Uh, in other words, it has to be replaced from time to time because it is either eaten or drunk or uh, used up in one way or another. Is that right? Yes. Well, now, would this be used up by being put inside the mouth? Yes. In part, yes. Hmm? In part. Only part of it would be put into the mouth? You throw away the peel. Uh, <laughs> Well, what, what all we're trying to convey, we don't want to confuse you, is that um, you suggested that, it, you know, you might put everything in the mouth at once. Well, I... You say seen, only part. Well, yeah. would, uh, after all this is over, Miss Flory, would I gather from this, am I correct in saying that this would not aid your digestion in any particular way? It would not aid your digestion. There is, I believe, the premise that actually it does aid digestion. We might, you and I have a quarrel about this later, but right. two, no. One out of six to go, Miss Kildallan. <clears throat> Well, when this string is in the gentleman's mouth, does part of it show at any time? Yes. He's no gentleman if it does. <laughs> is, is this anything that has ever grown at any time, even in part? Yes. Has it ever been in leafy form? Yes. Is it any form of tobacco? Yes. Well, uh, is it cigars? Yes. Yes. Bob, <laughs> Bob, Bob. Now, wait a minute. Now we have identified the product as cigars, but what relation does Miss Flory have to the cigar? She wraps them, or, you know, that thing they do with cigars. <laughs> Puts you... one layer on top of another. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid we'll have to give it. Actually, make cigars is the right answer. Very good, panel. Well, Miss Flory, you have done reasonably well with the prize department, but more, we hope that uh, you've had a good time. It's been did. nice to have it you with us on What's My Line. Thanks very much. For John, John, Mr. Daly, about, yes. this, about this digestion. It may help the man's digestion, but I don't, I don't think wives' digestion will help by it. No. That's true. I should have given you a qualified Qualified. Sum. All right, now let's see what you can do with another challenger. You've all ready signed in. That is Ruth Cooper. Is that right? Will you come over here? <laughs> Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. And where are you from, Mrs. Cooper? <clears throat> Center of the world, Mercerville, New Jersey. The center of the world, Mercerville, New Jersey. Wait till you hear about this up in Boston. There's going to be some problems. Well, now, would you be good enough to uh, walk down there in front of the panel? They would like to know you a bit better. Hi. Is that where the Mercer School is, Miss? Mercerville. Mercerville School. Well, Mercer me. Mercerville Evans. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Cooper, will you come over here now, please, and sit down next to me? And uh, what we do at this point, because you've had a chance to meet the panel and they've had a chance to meet you, is to give them one free guess as to what your line may be. And we'll begin those free guesses, as usual, with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Cooper raises porkers. Raises porkers? Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen. I think she lowers porkers. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Benson. I think she's a wardrobe mistress. Mr. Sir. I think she works in a boys' school. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Cooper. At the same time, they will learn what her line is. Miss Cooper, the pen, the pen is going to work. I think you know. I think you know what the rules are. Every time we get a no answer out of the panel, it costs them five dollars. We keep the record as always, right up here. The ten of these knows, and you have won the game. This is the last usual bit of help. Mrs. Cooper is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. 
Thanks a lot. <laughs> Boy, from that reaction, she must pitch for the Dodgers or something. Uh, Mrs. Cooper, uh, is there, uh, in the course of your work, uh, do you come into contact with a product of any kind? Yeah. I think these people know something. Um, is it a product that might be encountered in the home? Yes. Is there anything funny about that? Uh, could I possibly hold it in my hand? Yes. Uh, is it something that a housewife might come into contact with? Yes. Uh, could she conceivably come into contact with it at uh, mealtime? Yes. Uh, well, let me get right to the point. Is it, uh, is it edible? Yes. I gather, I gather from the reaction of the audience that this is something that would not ordinarily be served as the main course. <laughs> well, I will have to say, Steve, you're right. This is not something that would be... Yes, it would not be served as a main course, no. In fact, the reaction was so vigorous, I, I would suppose that there are some people who would not even like to eat this at all. Is that <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, there's issue of personal choice in almost every decision any of us takes. <laughs> There'd be some people who wouldn't like to eat this. Let me think, what is edible that I don't like? Uh, <laughs> outside of food. Could you possibly put this on a piece of rye bread? Now, the question, could you put it on a piece of rye bread? Yes. <laughs> I gotta have a conference. <laughs> <laughs> conference and we have decided since the question phrased is could you put this on a piece of rye bread that in all fairness to you we should say yes you could put it on <laughs> oh i think i'm on the wrong track altogether <laughs> might as well clear it up though is this the kind of a thing that people might like to uh, eat say uh, on crackers in bed that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> one down and nine to go miss francis would you be able to purchase this in a store? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Cooper, is this a liquid by any chance? Mm, could be. Could be. Yes, could, be. could be. Does it have any medical properties? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it hasn't got any medical properties. Three down and seven to go, have, Ms. Kilgallen. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, is this by any chance something that unless you were terribly eccentric, you would never serve at dinner? No. Yeah. Yes, it is something that you would not serve at dinner. Would not serve yes. at dinner. Yes, you would not serve it at dinner, no. But you have said that housewives would come in contact with it and Steve yes. would have come in contact with it. Do you think I might have come in contact with it? Does this have a variety of aspects? <laughs> Would you have it around the house as a result of something else that happened? Yeah. Would you have it around the house as a result of something else that had oh. happened? Yeah. Would you have it around the house as a result of eating meals? Yes. Is it something like garbage? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why Steve wouldn't put it on a piece of rye bread? <laughs> that's why we were very careful to say, Steve said, could you put it on rye bread? Well, you could put it on rye bread. I don't know if you want to. But now we've identified the product as garbage. But what does Mrs. Cooper have to do with same? Is she by any chance a collector? I'm afraid we'd have to buy that because Mrs. Cooper actually drives a garbage truck, which I meant to would be. <laughs> she has a collector to drive. <laughs> well, Mrs. Cooper, let's see. You have won $15. Thanks for being our guest Thanks very much. Well, very good, panel. <laughs> now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll introduce our mystery guest. But first, word of an interesting new product. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel would recognize our guest right away, so we've provided them with blindfolds. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please?
panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery guest, we always dispense with preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which uh, we will begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Uh, would you be considered an entertainer? Yes. <laughs> uh, would you be considered a leading man? Perhaps. Perhaps? <laughs> Are you uh, uh, in pictures? You mean the moving pictures? <laughs> well, I knew he wasn't hanging in the Louvre. <laughs> we would like here, because there is a specific pointed issue, to ask Have you to you repeat the in... question. All right, John. Have you been in motion pictures? Yes. Uh, well, since there is some concern about the picture angle, do you also appear in television? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a serious actor? No. <laughs> what about a mind to go, Mr. Sir? Uh, might I ask, do you ever use any props in your act? Yes. Would this prop be, by any chance, alive? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, you <laughs> are not a serious actor, has that been established? That's right, yes. Well, are you then a... Funny actor? Wait. Are, you, are you a comedian? <laughs> I'll answer it for him, Miss Dorothy. A very funny actor. Uh, do you have your own uh, television show? One, one on which you star regularly, I mean. Yes. Uh, you're not just a, a floating guest artist. <laughs> uh, <do> you... <laughs> I didn't quite get that, uh, Dorothy. Uh, do you this work... This man is firmly anchored. <laughs> <laughs> do you work with uh, other people in your act, either partners or straight men? Yes. Uh, do you work with a woman in your act? Sometimes. Uh, do you also work with a straight man at times? Yes. Do you all work together sometimes? Yes. Sounds uh, heavenly. Are you, uh, <laughs> are you an excellent dialectician? No. That makes, <laughs> makes it three down and seven to go. That is a <coughs> subjective judgment. Mr. Allen? Do you do impersonations? Yes. Sounds like Gable, no. <laughs> uh, Martin or Clark? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have your own radio program? Yes, baby. <laughs> Right, bud. <laughs> um, are you over 40? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Would you be considered a juvenile? <laughs> no. What is this? No. No. Five, I didn't seven. say delinquent. I said juvenile. Yes. <laughs> but delinquent, you might have got a different answer. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sin. Have you ever done any ventriloquism? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. I still think you're a good dialectician, but uh, <laughs> I'll skip that. Um, do you ever make odd noises and impersonate inanimate objects? No. Make odd noises and impersonate inanimate objects. What, mm -hmm. what do you have? Do you mind if well, we... Well, like uh, do imitations of things like pinball machines. No. No pinball machine, he. Are you uh, on the heavy side? Yes. It's too bad. <laughs> you see, I had a thin fellow in mind. <laughs> Do you work for a rival network? No. Eight down and... Wait a minute. That's right. You don't know. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. You're on the lighter side and, the, and you're heavy. You're a comedian and you're a heavy comedian. Um, do, have you a, do you appear on a regular television show once a week? Yes. Um... Do you sort of not care what happens to you on this show? I mean, do they throw you around and, and uh, 
you know, slide down alleys and carry on like mad and wear funny clothes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, you don't, are you, you are an American. Yes. Uh, you don't, are you Jimmy Gleason? No. Uh, Jack Gleason? Jack Gleason. That's the slickest French accent we've heard in a long, long time. <laughs> It was very, very pleasant being on the show. Well, I must say it was a great pleasure having you with us. Thank you, John. Honor us with your presence. Would you say bye-bye to the sure. panel? It's nice to see you, Jack. <laughs> now let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Jack? Jack Joyce, is that right, sir? Tell us, first of all, where you're from. Uh, Ventura County, California. Ventura County, California. Well, Mr. Surf just came from Ventura County, California. Time is getting a little bit short, so will you just walk down in front of the panel, turn right around and walk back again? Right back here, Mr. Uh, Joyce, if you will, and sit down next to me. And uh, the panel has had a chance to get a quick look at you. At this point, we always give them one free guess as to what your line may be. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he makes golf tees. Mr. Allen. I think he's one of Jackie Gleason's riders. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think he's an outrider at the racetrack. Mr. Sir. I think Mr. Joyce runs one of those cable cars on Powell Street in San Francisco. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Joyce, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> Now that everything's all ready here, we've got the scoreboard set. Mr. Joyce, I think you know the rules. Each no answer, five dollars, ten no's. You win the game. We keep the score up here. Mr. Joyce is salaried with that. Let's begin the general questioning with Bennett, sir. Mr. Joyce, is there a product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. Miss Kilgallen. You deal in services, then? Yes. Uh, do you deal with both men and women when you're performing your services? Deal with both men and women when you are performing your services? Yes, Mr. Are you inclined to come in contact with one sex more than the other, however? Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Are these men? <laughs> They're no, not? No, I think if you, the question was, are these men? We'd have to say uh, no. one of them. One, two Fair down enough. and eight to go, Mr. Uh, Allen. Uh, are they by any chance children? Uh, no. No, that's mm -hmm. three down and seven to go, Miss Francie. Are they by any chance animals? Yes. Uh, you might come in contact with animals. That's right. In your work. Uh, is there a, are there a variety of animals in your job? No. And that would make it four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Joyce, are these animals that uh, are raised uh, in California? Mm. Well, I, they are, uh, some are raised there. I and mean, we'd have to answer you in a qualified sense. I would there, say then there aren't very many of these animals in California. Is that correct? Uh, yes, there are not. Very have these, uh, have oh, these... you should be moderator. That was very good. <laughs> yes, Go have on, these sir. animals been imported for exhibition rather than for uh, farming of some sort? Yes. Would you find them in a zoo? Yes. Have you got something to do with a zoo? No. No, that's five down and five to go. But Bennett, you opened a lot of doors. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are these animals animals which are ever performing animals? Uh, yes. Um, have they got uh, four legs or hands and feet or whatever you want to call them? <laughs> four legs, yes, Miss. Do they sometimes stand up and walk around like this? No, yes. you mean stand up on their hind legs and walk around? Yes. No, thank you very much. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. But they have four legs, is that right? Uh-huh, uh -huh. four something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I presume they never have any more than four legs, is that correct? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are right in presuming they don't have more than four legs. Do they have fur? Uh, yes. Do they ever bite? Mm, yes. Why don't you get rid of them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, one more question. Our time is running out. Uh, do your animals perform, I mean, with you? Yes. Are you uh, an animal trainer? Yes, he is, but that isn't enough. So we'll have to time his run out, and uh, Mr. Joyce will get the full prize by default. You had the right idea. Actually, he trains camels. 
You know the, the uh, Pollock Brothers Shrine Circus that does so much good for, for crippled youngsters? Well, he has a trained camel group, and they do wonderful work. What does he train them to do? The only he smoked them. He trains the camel. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Joyce, and you get the full prize. I can have you again. And now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. And next week, at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for answers to these and a good many other questions, some of them serious and some of them hilarious, be sure and join us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again, Stop It invites you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly television series. And don't forget What's My Line on Wednesday nights on CBS Radio. Until we see you again, then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Bennett. Sure, nice to be back. Good night, John. <laughs> and nice to have you back. Good night, and glad to have you with us on What's My Line. They come from all over the globe, seeking the thrill of competition and attainment of the ultimate prize, the high score. GSN.com. Serious fun.